listening to Keep Em Alive, one of the singles off of punk rock legends The Damned's new EP, The Rockfield Files. The Damned are Britain's greatest surviving punk rock band from the good old days. And the Rockfield Studios are especially important because this is where the band would record what would eventually become their most successful releases, The Black Album and Strawberries. Now, almost 40 years later, The Damned, with three quarters of the original lineup from those sessions, return to this special place to record what will be the last release with their longtime drummer, Pinch, who's been with the band for the better part of the last two decades. I had the privilege to speak with one of Britain's punk rock OGs, Captain Sensible, about the new EP and about his thoughts on the pandemic. It is quite apparent that the man does not like Bill Gates. Sorry, Bill. Uh, we also chat about some fun stories from the old days, including a special one about a show in Toronto which had Captain Sensible waking up in the hospital. Here's my chat with punk rock legend Captain Sensible of The Damned. How'd you do this? One, two, one, two. There, you got it. Uh, crikey. <laughs> I've got a clue. I'm old. What do I know about technology? Ah, oh, you're doing great. This is working. This is working fine. <laughs> is it? Oh, good. <laughs> How are you doing today? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. How, is, uh, how has COVID been treating you? Oh, <laughs> well, I would say I'm avoiding it like the plague, but... Uh, <laughs> I mean, I think it only affects the old and people with pre, pre-existing conditions. So I qualify certainly uh, on some of those counts. Right, right. So, so yeah, but no, I, I can't be done wearing masks and stuff. You know, it's, uh, it, I start, you know, I, I can't breathe. I yeah. mean, what's, the, what's with the mask thing, you know? I don't I get know. it. I don't I know. get it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a strange new world we all live in, isn't it? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Just getting on with my life. Uh, of course, there's no gigs, which is a absolute tragedy mm-hmm. um, because it's the only life I've ever known, really. Right. Um, well, how much were you uh, were you performing before everything happened? Oh well, uh, only only for the last forty forty two years. Oh, well, I know that, but I just mean on the re- on the regular, would you be going out uh, quite a bit? To, to yeah, play? we 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 still do. Yeah, as, as much as we can these days. Right. Bearing in mind we're a bunch of old farts. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing as you're not able to go out and, and perform, what what do you do to keep busy? What's your what does the day to day in the captain's life look like? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You don't want to know. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, well, I've uh, I, I just started trying to grow chilies, actually. Uh, oh, that's awesome! Which is a, I, I love hot, hot, spicy food, and the the thing about hot food is uh, your intolerance uh, to it. Um, your or, or is it the other way around? Your tolerance. Yeah, it becomes lesser and lesser. The the, the hotter you um, the hotter the food you eat, the the more um, the more um, chili you need to pile on it you know so, right <laughs> um so it's a labor of love if you like okay are, are you doing any other gardening or is it just chilies no just chilies <laughs> just chilies okay cool well yeah let's talk about the the new single from the upcoming ep the uh rockfield files new singles called keep them alive came out august 14th so what we're just uh just over half a month ago, it came out. It's awesome. It sounds it sounds really great. There's a lot of stuff going on, and I I thought it was interesting that you guys went back to Rockfield Studios to record this. What was the, the reason for making that decision? Yeah, well, it's uh, we don't make bad records at Rockfield, you know, um, and we've not been back for so long, really. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, yeah, it just seemed obvious. I mean, it's just a very inspiring place to go to, and this. Uh, possibly because, you know, we're, we're all townies. I know nothing about the countryside. And when I go there, I mean, I'll have a look, at, I'll have a potter around, you know, and say hello to the cows. But really, you know, I don't know, I know so little about the countryside. I just like sort of end up in my comfort zone, which is like sort of standing in front of a loud, a loud guitar with, you know, make, making an, so so you just end up working all night in the studio because there's nothing else to do really. Right. You know, um, yeah, it's just yeah, 
so I mean, it, and we went back with uh, it was the last work that we ever we'll ever do with Pinch, you know, our drummer. And uh, so there's there's not enough material for an album. There's enough, but there is enough for an EP. Okay. So it's the it's it's the goodbye Pinch EP basically. But uh, <laughs> the blo the bloke's been absolutely immense, you know. Um, it takes it takes a, an incredible drummer to fill the you know the shoes of um, I don't know Mr. Scabies. Mm -hmm. And uh, and various other drummers we've had, but Pin Pinch has done this for get, get on for twenty years, and uh, he deserves a medal really for working with Mr. Vanian and myself because uh, <laughs> it can't be easy really. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean we're, we're we're as eccentric as they come. Right. What what was his uh, reasoning for parting ways with you guys? Well, <laughs> I don't think there's much money in punk rock. <laughs> um, you know, I mean we. We, we we gig around the world, you know, and we, uh, you know, we play reasonable, reasonably uh, nice venues and everything. But uh, but the the dosh you make basically uh, after after the uh, the crew have been paid and the hotels and the airfares, I mean, we earn less than um, you know most people uh, who do um, who do. Uh, uh, no, uh, in inverted commas, normal normal jobs. <laughs> right. So, so pinch basically. Uh, you know, he got fed up with being broke all the time. <laughs> <laughs> what what is uh, what is pinch's day job? He stage manages. Um, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, th things that he's learned on the road from uh, from us, and things not to do probably. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> He, I know he was um, working at various House of Blues in uh, California, and uh, I think he's worked at a casino as well in uh, uh, Sequan. Is mm -hmm. it called the Sequan Casino? Or, yeah, uh, stage managing. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, he's basically learned all the things not to do by watching us. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, you guys might not be millionaires, but you are still highly regarded. You're legends, you're living legends, which I think, you know, money can't buy that. So that you, you do have that. Blimey. Good joke. <laughs> Le legends. <laughs> <laughs> so I also saw that Tom Delgerty produced the EP, which I thought was very interesting. He normally does a lot heavier stuff. And I was wondering, uh, I was wondering why you guys decided to work with Tom on this one. Uh, the last album we did was with uh, Tony Visconti, mm -hmm. um, which, you know, I mean, I, I thought the album was terrific. And uh, Tony Visconti certainly tells a very, you know, he tells a very good Mark Bolan anecdote, which uh, which was fun for me because uh, being a fan of T-Rex and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, so but a lot of the fans complained that the guitar wasn't high enough in the mix. Um, and uh, I think the record label's idea was of getting Tom... Dal Getty on board was uh, he he knows a thing or two about um, guitar bands, mm -hmm. so he seemed like the man for the job. Um, yeah, I like the ghost stuff. That was that was pretty interesting. And raw blood, of course. Mm -hmm. Did Tom bring anything different during the actual recording process? Um, I I think the the thing about working with the Damned is to because um, everyone's a little bit eccentric. It's it's not like a band. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, a gentleman's club on the road, you know. And um, <laughs> you know, okay, the, the colonel with his monocle, and you know, uh, the eccentric old so and so in the corner. Don't worry about him; it's only old, sensible, you know. <laughs> and that's it's so uh, you have to be you have to be fairly tolerant as a producer um, with with the damned, and 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 just. Yeah, just just keep it rolling along, really. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, I mean, Tom bought his his experiment like mad. You know, we would turn the tape over when when we had tape. So so track one would end up being track twenty four. You know, and the engineer would be going, "Oh, you can't do that because all the EQs will be wrong and the effects and everything." Yeah, but but the, that kind of anarchic vibe it, it just made for some interesting you know, music, I thought, mm -hmm. and, it, it, and rules are made for break, breaking anyway. Certainly, so, yeah. I achieved what I wanted to because the guitars are right up in the mix. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are for sure. Well, let's talk about the guitars and keep them alive. There's that cool lick going throughout and then you got the, the song kind of like takes a breather and it relaxes towards the end and it comes right back in. Tell me about the guitars on, on this and do we, are we going to be able to hear this throughout the EP, the upcoming EP? 
Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I'm using a. I got myself a new old amp. Uh, it's, a, it's a Mesa Boogie Triaxis, and um, I, I, my thinking there was if it was good enough for Metallica, it's good enough for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's it's just a you know a really warm sounding raunchy um, you know valve amp, and it's it just sounds great. Uh, so yeah, it's it's all over the EP. Um, What's the question? I can't remember. Oh, well, just, just if we can expect to hear uh, more gu guitar-fronted um, yeah. songs on the EP. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, I think the, the, uh, the fact that Queen uh, recorded uh, um, some of their best stuff at Rockfield, um, there, there was the kind of influence of that, really. I was thinking about... Um, because I really admired Brian May's guitar playing, you know, it's, mm -hmm. and the sound he gets is... is uh, it's really fun and yeah. it's so in innovative. So um, there's, there's actually a bit on uh, Keep Them Alive. It's very uh, Brian May. Okay, you know, cool. Um, I was thinking that when I uh, when I listened to it. Was you? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's 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 a definite. It's a cop governor. Yeah. I slap on the bracelets. I'll come quietly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. It's it's a, it really is a very Brian May section. But I was staying in his room, you know. Um, uh, because it's a residential studio, uh, right. I, I actually have the room that Brian May used to have. So oh, no maybe, way. you know, maybe the, the, the influence was, yeah. Right, there's some the spiritual stuff going on, possibly? Yeah, possibly. <laughs> yeah, I do like, you know, I mean, we would never see the likes of Queen again, probably, which, yeah. would, you know, which would be a shame. Right. You know, and it's... I just think, yeah. You know, I mean, the Queen, Queen were, uh, you know, they came from the seventies. The Damned came from the seventies. Sweet and Slade, and you know, and all these great, you know. I mean, it's just a great sound, and uh, definitely, and uh, yeah, this, uh, yeah, blah blah blah. Well, I'm rabbiting on now. <laughs> um, can you tell me what the uh, the essence of the song is about uh, for "Keep Him Alive"? Oh, "Keep Him Alive" was, well, you know. We uh, we need to do uh, what we can to keep bees alive, basically, because there's so much food that ends up on our tables um, is pollinated by bees. You know, it's mm -hmm. all the crops and the grains and all that stuff. <coughs> so, yeah. So, in in a way, really, they keep us alive. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'd, def we'd definitely be dead without them. <laughs> yeah, the, the numbers of bees is uh, dropping dramatically. It's because yeah. we're, you know, we're um, destroying their habitat, taking the habitat away, you know, and pesticiding them to death and, and, and all the rest of it. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe we should have a think about that. As, as, you know, it's just obvious what we need to do is uh, intensive farming and pesticides are, uh, are killing bees and... and uh, you know, org organic is the way to go, if, if, if that's at all possible. Yeah, definitely. Would you say that uh, what we've heard on this on this single is what we can expect to hear for, for the rest of the album? Pretty much, yeah. It's, um, the, once again, you know, going back to the old uh, Rockfield albums, so the Black Album and, and stuff like that, mm -hmm. there's a lot of experimenting going on, on, on just on these four tracks. Right. You know, uh, we're really going for it and... Um, bringing every, you know, everything we know and we've learned in 40 years um, to the table really here. Uh, yeah, and, you know, and, and of course we've learned to play our instruments uh, in, in the intervening <laughs> years as well. Right. So, I mean, we, we do sound like, I, I, I always judge the damned, you know, uh, on against... The, the great great bands that I used to go and see when I was a when I was a teenager, which was a musical education. You know, I used to go and see people like um, Black Sabbath and Led Zeppelin and Deep Purple, all, the, all these great kind of early seventies bands. You know, mm -hmm. and I, um, and when punk came along, and I and I've been sitting in my bedroom like practicing, practicing, trying to trying to work out a few a few guitar licks and stuff. And when punk came along, I was I was um, thrown into it really. Uh, I mean, you, the punk said you you know learn three chords and, and put a band together. But uh, I I wanted to be as good as the, the the you know I wanted to be as good as Jimi Hendrix and Jimmy Page and all these people. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, 
which isn't easy. No, <laughs> no, no. It's pretty <laughs> high, uh, pretty high standard yeah. to try and reach. <laughs> but I think I, 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 you know, I think we actually sound sound now like a, a proper band. You know, I yeah, mean, I, not 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 as good as you know um, as. I shouldn't say this really, because Dave Vania might hear. But I don't think we're as, you know, I don't, we're not quite up to the Jimi Hendrix standards. But, uh, um, but you know, we, we, we do sound like a proper band. And we could do, I, I feel we could do absolutely anything now. You know, we could, we could tackle anything. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and so that's, that's, so we should really make more records because, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great position to be in, to be, at, you know, to have creativity coming out of your ear rolls. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, the, the, the thing about, you know, if there's anything good about this uh, dastardly virus and, and all these stupid lockdowns and everything, if there's anything good about it, it means that anyone who can put together free chords is going to make, a, is going to make their um, lockdown album. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be so much amazing music come out. Because there's no gigs, there's nothing else for musicians to do. There's so, there's going to be so many great albums come out I I over the next six months, you know, and all fighting for the same audience, which which is great, you know, because um, it, there's never ever going to be, uh, there's never going to have been a, a period like it for a, a plethora of, of of amazing music in the Definitely. scene all at the same time. Yeah. So there, yeah. yeah. Talk about competition. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What uh, what have you been listening to during uh, during these times? I pretty much well when I'm when I'm working on uh, music, I can't listen to anything else. Okay, um, that's a, because uh, it it's, it just destroys everything for me. So so I don't have a TV and I don't have a radio. And you know, but I've got a radio. I haven't got a television, but I have got a radio. But it doesn't. I don't turn it on until I finished whatever project projects I'm working on. Okay. Um, so what am I listening to? I, I, nothing, nothing mm. really. <laughs> okay. Well, um, but I, I've got, uh, there's, I've got about 50 albums in my collection um, that it takes an incredible um, per a work of perfection to, to join the, you know, the, the albums that I've, uh, accumulated over over uh, my lifetime right do you know what the last album is that you bought that's like made it to the collection um it might be um el paro del mar um a scandinavian lady who uh who made this uh, really melancholy album just her and acoustic guitar and um and some really great uh, production by a um yeah Dutch, uh, a Scandinavian chap, um, El Perro del Mar, which means the dog on the beach. Ah, interesting. Um, it's, it's just an incredible album. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Do you keep up with the uh, like modern punk scene at all? Or you kind of just st stay away from that? Well, until, until gigs stopped, you know, I, I would, uh, I, I try to get to rebellion in Blackpool every year. Uh, okay. this, it's an amazing punk festival with, uh, six stages, and um, oh, you wow. just you just wander around, and there's always something incredible on. And you know, forget about the old the old lags like the Damned and uh, the Dickies and and all the rest of them. It's the new uh, young punk groups that have got something new to say that uh, I I always find really exciting. And there's you know there's so many of them, and they're fantastic. You don't hear them on the radio, but believe me, there's 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 a fantastic scene going on. Out there, you know, and like sort of mixing, you know, punk with rap, and uh, you know, and going places that the Sex Pistols and you know, and the Clash and the Dam never, you know, never really thought of. I'm taking it further. It's it's really fun. Um, a Wonk Unit. I really like Wonk Unit. Have you heard of wonk them? Wonk Unit. No, I haven't heard of them. No. <laughs> from from Wales. Yeah, they're really fun. Wonk Unit. So okay, I'm writing that down right now. <laughs> Cool. And I have one question here from a fan off of a website that I found. And it's a pretty in-depth question. So hopefully we can get through it. Sure. So here it goes. Their username is Mr. Bobalina. And they say you debuted a solo release. This is your captain speaking on Crass Records in 1981. They want to know how that came about and what you make of Crass as a band and the direction that they took their interpretation of punk. 
That's a great question. Yeah, um, I was finding, you know, I was I was seeing a lot of uh, damn, you know, damn fans with the damn, the clash, on the back of their leather jackets or whatever, and um, you know, and then a lot of the, a lot of them suddenly appeared, you know, with crass. Uh, the <laughs> the Sex Pistols had gone, and the crass was on there instead. Right. Um, so I wondered, who, you know, so I checked them out, and I, I went down to a couple of gigs. And they were playing. They were playing pubs around London, and um, you know, talking to them everything. They and they was, it was really. Uh, they were really amazing people. They just said, "Well, come and stay with us for a, for a few days in our squats," you know, and uh, which I did. I, I sleep on anyone's floor, mm-hmm. um, and um, <laughs> you know, they they fed me, and and over the space of a week, uh, it was like an education because. Uh, when I left school, I was, you know, you know, I didn't I didn't have any qualifications, and I, I didn't know much about anything really. I was a bit of a football hooligan, and okay. uh, I, I think in that week, you know, I I became a vegetarian, and I learned about politics and anarchy and all the rest of it. And um, yeah, I really have to thank them for all that because uh, because they. Um, you know, I, I was a, a rebel. <laughs> I suppose I was a rebel without a brain, um, <laughs> and uh, and uh, they put me on the right path. Anyway, uh, I went back to see uh, Penny Rimboard. Um, he's still in the same place, Dial House, uh, up in uh, uh, Epping, and um, he he just potters around his garden now, doing doing the garden. He's got a very nice garden. Oh, that's uh, but awesome. He's, yeah, he's an absolutely lovely bloke. But making that record, you know, with uh, the, uh, just with Penny and, uh, and, and the studio engineer, John Loder, yeah. Um, it, that was a really fun experience as well because we were, we were really shrieking with laughter most of the time making this, this, uh, re- this record, this anti-war record, you know. But it was, it's a really, really funny record because... Uh, yeah, because the lyrics are quite quite scathing. You, you I think you can say more with sarcasm uh, than you can by standing on a soapbox, like sort of uh, ranting. I would agree with that for sure. Uh, someone wants to know what the most punk rock thing is uh, that you've done in the last couple of years. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Dear, oh dear. Punk rock. What, me? I'm a boring old bastard. Um, What's punk rock? I don't know. What is punk rock? I mean, that's a good question, isn't it? Yeah, okay. What would you say is punk rock now? What is punk rock? Well, it's um, not doing what you're told, really, isn't it? It's making your your own mind up about stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, You know... uh, not 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 living not ba- not obeying rules the first rule of punk is there's no rules i always thought mm-hmm. um yeah so you know it's like well i mean i i've been walking around um you know uh, the shops not wearing a mask is that punk rock i don't know possibly but, you know, it could what? be your interpretation right now yeah yeah I mean, okay. you know, I'm not going to... If Bill Gates wants to be a wear a fucking mask, he can stick it up his arsehole. <laughs> there you go. That's it. <laughs> you know, I bet he's not wearing a fucking mask. He's, oh, he's not, he's not he's walking sick. around in stores. No, no, he's not. No. But, you know, I tell you what, that, that guy's not social distancing. He's not sitting at home twiddling his thumbs. He's, he's out there and flying around in his private jet, you know, busily scheming and, you know... Um, plotting a way to, uh, you know, to keep to keep the little people like us, you know, in our place, like billionaires do, you know. I right. mean, this guy, this guy truly is Doctor Evil, you yeah. know, from uh, from the uh, Austin Powers uh, trilogy. Right. You know. So, so whatever Bill Gates wants me to do, he can fuck off. Is that <laughs> punk rock enough? I think so. I think that counts. You guys have been around for so long. You've been working with tons of bands. You've been on tour of a ton, tons of bands. Since you've been playing, who is the most underrated band you've played with? Oh, crikey. Um, well, that, the, the problem with that is I, I can't really do the memory game because <laughs> for obvious reasons. I, right. um, I, I, lived, I lived the rock and roll lifestyle and it's taken its toll. Um, <laughs> I, I really like the Toilet Boys. Do you remember them? No, I don't. 
Toilet Boys, um, Ele Electric Frankenstein, they were a laugh. Okay. Um, of course, we worked with the Dickies, but the, you know, they're, they're huge. Mm -hmm. um, um, the Bell Rays are fantastic. Uh, do you know the Bell Rays? I do, yes, yes, I do. Yeah, they're absolutely excellent. They are awesome, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, just a great, great live band, you know? Yeah. Um, as, as are the Ruts, you know? The Ruts are a great live band. They, um, yeah, we work with some good, good people. Yeah, for sure, you have, definitely. One more question. Uh, after the EP, seeing as this is more of a, uh, an ode to the drummer that is, uh, that is leaving, can we yeah. expect a full-length album coming, coming out any, any time after that, sooner yeah. rather than later? Um, well, I think everyone in the world is making their album at the moment, so there's plenty of music going to be coming out around mm -hmm. Christmas. Um, but yeah, we, Mr. Vanian and myself are, are putting materials together for another trip to the studio. Excellent. As we Indeed. speak. But, you know, I honestly think, and, you know, when you, when you interview people in, you know, bands and stuff, what's your, what's your new material like? You know, they probably, it's obligatory to say, well, this is, this is the best thing we've ever done. And, oh, we're mm -hmm. so excited. You know, and I hear these interviews and I think, oh, God, you, you boring turd, you know, you're just, <laughs> you, if, it was a, if it was garbage, you'd say that. But honestly, this, um, this uh, Rockfield Files EP is absolutely stonking. It's like, you know, absolutely top stuff. And we're really stretching ourselves as well. Yeah. So uh, these, these four songs, e each of which could have been a single, um, I just think it's uh, the best work we've done for blooming years. Well, probably since we were at Rockfield last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. So we have a lot to look forward to uh, from the damned. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll get it back out on the road um, again one day when, when the powers that be let us. Yeah. Oh, blimey, terrible. I know, it? I know. It's looking like 2020, <laughs> 2021. I know they're doing like smaller shows uh, around Canada right now, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be a while until, uh, until there's like big international, international tours anyway. Yeah, that, until that nice Mr. Gates lets us go out and do some more gigs. Thank yeah, you, Bill. I know. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah, yeah, we're going to keep having to bug him. <laughs> yeah. I hated Windows anyway. It was bloody shit. <laughs> awesome. Well, Captain, I think that's, uh, that's all the time I have with you. I know you have a very busy schedule today. I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. Oh, yeah, nice one. Yeah, good luck to you. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about the Wi-Fi. It's not just not happening, is it? No, it's all right. Take... It's all right. I think now it's it's actually okay that we turned off the video, so I'll be able to salvage yeah. something and uh, make make sense of uh, the, the broken up parts. No problem. <laughs> Ex excellent. Okay. Well, you have a wonderful day. Good luck with the rest of your interviews, and uh, I'm really looking forward to the new uh, the new LP coming out. Cheers, and and hopefully gigs will start up at some point. You know. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out on the road again. That'd be wonderful. If you guys ever come through Canada. Canada, I'll uh, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, uh, Toronto. I fell off the stage, didn't I? I broke broke a rib. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. Yeah, I'll never never forget that one. Because there, because <laughs> the whole audience were like, sort of, you know, I mean, the, and Mr. Vanian was like, uh, he he thought I was dead because I was. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we weren't going to that one. But uh, I just, I just woke up in the hospital. You know. I thought, oh What's my going, god. Going on here, and they gave me morphine. I don't know if you've. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had morphine, but it's no, uh, no, never. Yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite a drug. I mean, after you vomited all over the place, I, I mean, I, I decorated the redecorated the tour manager's shirt. Um, <laughs> it's uh, after that you you just go on this kind of blissful high, you know. So you can see why it's so horribly addictive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Quite quite a, uh, a dangerous drug, really. So. Well, let's just hope that uh, that that doesn't happen the next time. Yeah, I, yeah, I'll, I'm going to stay away. From, well, I blame the bastard who threw the pint of beer, you know, because uh, <laughs> the, the, there was a pint of beer ended up at the front of the stage, you know. Then the the lighting person, in in their wisdom, turned all the lights off, and I slipped on it and went flying. Oh but my god! <coughs> I wasn't drunk, you see. It wasn't my fault. It was some other swine. <laughs> <laughs> well, Captain, thank you so much. I really appreciate okay, no. it. Cheers, Tara. Bye. Cheers. Bye.